Hello everyone, I am Bhavika Bansal from Chandigarh Civil Services and in this video I will be discussing with you section B of the UPSC Law Optional Paper 1 of 2023 which comprises of international law. So the questions from international law were very direct so, and uh, in this video I will explain that how these could be attempted. The first question which is compulsory. In this, each answer has to be written in about 150 words. It comprises of five parts and the first one is Triumph of positivism has reduced an individual to be an object of international law rather than a subject of international law. Comment on the status of the individual under international law in the light of above statement. So in this question, the nature of international law, the theory of positivism has been mentioned. So we'll We'll have to uh, talk about that with the change of view, individuals as they are part of the state. So they are a subject of international law. Earlier they were considered as an object, but now with the view has changed and the, they are treated as subjects. Recent treaties which have uh, which gives rights and confers duties to an individual can also be included in this answer like Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Geneva Conventions, UN Charter. Now the second question is, what do you mean by a contiguous zone? Explain with reference to Indian practices on the subject. So in this question, firstly explain contiguous zone as per article 33 of the UN clause. Then discuss Indian practices by referring the territorial waters, uh, the Maritime Zones Act, territorial waters, continental shelf, exclusive economic zone and other Maritime Zones Act of 1976. This act is based on the convention on 1958 of the law of sea. Uh, you can also mention this. In this question, if you wish to, you can also mention about the notification of 1981 of the government, which was used by Supreme Court in 2013. It can give a different view to the answer. And I'll be discussing about this notification with the students of the regular batch. The next question is, explain the impact of recognition on the powers and privileges of the states. A very easy question and a direct one. Firstly, you have to explain what is recognition and then explain the powers and privileges which a state acquires when it is recognized. Make a list of them and explain them in short. That is it. Now, this question explain the principle of just cogens with reference to Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties of 1969. Again a direct question, first explain the principle of just cogens, then simply discuss article 53 and 64 of the convention. That's all that has to be written in this question. Now this last part of the first question, International Criminal Court is more of a Eurocentric organization than an international court. Explain the jurisdiction of International Criminal Court in the light of the above statement. So this word Eurocentric organization has been in news in the recent times. So we can start firstly by mentioning about the establishment of International Criminal Court and then explain its jurisdiction. Then we will justify the statement that why International Criminal Court is more of a Eurocentric organization like the membership of the court and the bias that can be seen in, it, in its operation. These are some of the reasons which you can list and explain. Coming to the next question, question number six, law must be stable and yet it cannot stand still as it needs to reconcile the conflicting needs of stability and change and in the fast developing world, the stability appears to have become the casualty in international law differentiate between the traditional international law and the new international law in the light of above statement. So we know that law must be living and must adapt with the changing times. Similarly, international law has also undergone many changes like that. Like the traditional international law was all about customary laws. It was purely state centric and had a very limited scope. Now the new international law with the change in times is based on treaties and conventions. It has its scope which is beyond the state. It focuses on individuals and organizations. So this is how you can differentiate between these two. Now the next question is, states show considerable flexibility in the procedures whereby they give effect to the rules of the international law within their territory. 
explain the acceptability of norms of international law in India, citing relevant cases on the subject. Now, this question is about how the international law is given effect. Some states follow monastic system in which they, which the law is directly applied to the states, but some follow a dualistic system where the first, where the law is first made at a national level which then gives effect to the international law such as the case of india article 51 of the constitution of india also provides for it so following this system time and again india has made various laws to enforce the international treaties in this various cases like vishakha versus state of rajasthan adm jabalpur versus shivkan shukla and there are many more these cases can be cited this question is how do you distinguish between the continental shelf and the exclusive economic zone explain giving examples a very direct question it can be easily distinguished define them their extent their rights of uh, the rights of states over these areas if you wish you can also draw the diagram for this question so in this question uh, question number seven part a Preamble of the UN Charter is representative of the aspirations of humanity in ensuring peace and security across the globe. How far have these objectives been achieved by the UN? Explain and elucidate. So in this, the preamble of the UN has to be deciphered. That to which extent the objectives of the preamble, which was made after the World War II, have been achieved in detail. What challenges are faced in it and failures, if any, relating to them in short. So the next question is, reservation in multilateral treaty excludes or modifies the legal effect of certain provisions of a treaty in its application to that state. Explain the circumstances under which reservations in treaties are permissible under the international law. Start this answer by giving the meaning of reservation as per Vienna Convention, cite the article that is article 2. Then list the circumstances under which the reservation is permissible. These are all direct provisions of the Vienna Convention, which are to explained in points. Now, the last part of question number seven is the what under what circumstances is recourse to force or aggression permissible and justifiable under the international law? Usually, peaceful methods of settlement are used, but the UN Charter specifically mentions about the times when the force can be used and intervention can be made. These are the grounds of intervention which have to be written in the answer. The question can be easily attempted. So this is the part A of the last question of the paper. WTO provides a platform for agreements amongst its members which form the legal foundation of global trade. Critically evaluate the importance of WTO in the new international economic order. So in this question, firstly explain what is new international economic order. Then explain what are the principles of WTO which are aligned with the principles of new international economic order. And then you can also give the critical evaluation of the same. The next question is, member states of the UN need to take appropriate action for protecting and improving human environment. In the light of the above statement, highlight the major steps of the UN for protecting human environment. It is such an easy question. You just have to list and explain in short all the treaties related to environment starting from Stockholm Conference of 1972 and you can list as many as you can. Now coming to the last question of paper 1. It is international humanitarian law is a set of tools to limit the effects of armed conflict Whereas international human rights law seeks to ensure a set of rights which are essential for survival of humans as humans. Distinguish between international humanitarian law and international human rights law in terms of their contents and purposes. It is a very easy question and you just have to simply distinguish between the content and, content and purpose of international humanitarian law and the international human rights law. Nothing else has to be written in this. So after having looked at all these questions, one thing is very clear that the question, international law portion is very easy to attempt. So this was all about paper 1. In the next video, I'll be discussing section A of paper 2. Until then, if you wish to get any of these questions evaluated, you can 
mail them to me at uh, law.bhavikabansal at gmail.com.